Gentlemen, you're rocking and rolling on a Monday. Hottest show on the streets here, giving you your Alabama football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Fresh off the second scrimmage over the weekend, Bryant Denny Stadium. We'll definitely get into that. We bring you the show from the magic city of Birmingham. We stream this to you through YouTube. Speak of the channel. You go ahead right now, you tap that subscribe button right now, hit subscribe, smash subscribe so that you can get all of your info on your Bama football program. Hit the like button as well. Drop a like on the show. Give us a thumbs up right there. Get those like levels up on the show daily. Super Chat Go, $100 daily. Super Chat Go, 100 bucks right there. We appreciate that from all of you. And don't forget to hit that little notification bell to make sure you miss nothing when it comes to your Crimson Tide football. But you know, a lot to dive into, a lot to unpack. We want you being a part of the show. You can do this by calling 205-448-1358. The number to call in. To get your voice be made known, 205-448-1358. One more time, 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you. So, Eli, without further ado, we're going to jump to topic number one of the conversation here on the show, that being the second scrimmage for Alabama, Bryant Denny, over the weekend, the quarterback room, uh, Everything is starting to shake out the way that we all kind of thought it would from the head coach's perspective to the coaching staff perspective to our own perspective as consumers. But first and foremost, Ty Simpson, the uh, mental clock sharper for Ty Simpson, uh, the redshirt sophomore from uh, Martin, Tennessee, controlled the offense the best. In the second scrimmage, now he primarily worked with the twos, the second team guys. He got some reps with the first team, but primarily with the twos. But Ty Simpson, middle, uh, mental clock faster, seems to have a bit more of an understanding of the offense, seems to have a bit more control of what's going to be asked of him to do. Uh, uh, to me, he has locked up that second quarterback spot behind one Jalen Milrow after the second scrimmage. Remember I mentioned before that it was Simpson and Dylan Larnigan kind of jockeying for that second spot. Simpson locked it up over the weekend, this past weekend during the second scrimmage there at Bryant Denny. I was told uh, credible sources vetting out this information. Ty Simpson, three total touchdowns, two of those passing. One of those went to Kobe Prentice. The other one went to Emmanuel Henderson. But Ty Simpson, three total touchdowns, including two passing scores. I mean, when he came out of high school, Westview High in Martin, Tennessee, we always kind of knew he had the ability to pass the football. His skill set lies more in that aspect. Though so he can run, does have no crazy legs, athleticism, but his skill set more so in the passing game but it was good watching Simpson go out there and get three touchdowns including two from the aerial attack game now it's going to be fun to see how he performs in the a-day game going back to the people that I've spoken to that has that have vetted this out to me Ty Simpson's not going anywhere not thinking about transferring not thinking about leaving the program. Ty Simpson is not going anywhere. He's sticking around where this Alabama football program is concerned. So it was very good for him to go out there Saturday of last week, get three touchdowns in the second scrimmage, showing you his ability to uh, know this off, well, to learn this offense, to pick up this offense, to gain understanding of this offense, and to apply what he's learning out there on the field. So, when you look at the quarterback room as a whole, Jalen Milrose QB won. He took 85% of the snaps with the first team. So he's QB one. Milrow had a rushing touchdown there in the first, in the second scrimmage, made some plays in the passing game as well. Ty Simpson looking like right now QB two, the primary backup. Number three, Dylan Larnigan. Larnigan had a big touchdown pass to King of Odom in the second scrimmage. And while some uh, and while I was told that if, if if there was a quarterback that could hit the portal, it could be Larnigan. 
but that's not even on his mind right now. So Lonigan's looking like he's going to want to stick around. And then you got Austin Mack, who's the number four guy. Mack, a bit raw, 17, 18 years old, transferring from Washington to Alabama. He's a freshman, kind of learning some things, growing in some areas, but definitely has the tools, definitely has the potential to really be a good one here in Alabama. So it has shaken out to be Milro 1, Simpson 2, Lornigan 3, and Austin Mack 4, which brings us to the question, does Kang and DeBoer and this coaching staff keep all four quarterbacks on the roster even after the A-Day game and even after the portal opens back up on April 15th? It looks like he may keep all four of them. The camaraderie, uh, the chemistry on this coaching staff right now, everybody kind of has the Alabama softball Mudita effect to where people want to be around each other. The players, they want to be around each other. The quarterbacks, they want to be around each other. They want to play with each other. Nobody wants to leave. Like the guys are really making each other better in the competition of it all, but they really want to see each other do well. So right now, it just looks like nobody is thinking about, nobody is trying to, nobody is anticipating leaving this quarterback room. That's huge. When you talk about the connection, uh, when you discuss the chemistry and the camaraderie that Kang and DeBoer and this coaching staff is building into these players. Now, a lot can change between now and in April 15th, most definitely. But as we sit and stand right here on this day, as we sit here and we look at things currently right now on April 8th, Solar Eclipse Day, uh, nobody in this quarterback room uh, is talking about, is discussing, uh, is thinking about hitting that transfer portal when you talk about April 15th, and that speaks volumes there to the quarterback room. And big ups there to one Ty Simpson in having the outstanding scrimmage that he had over the weekend. But we take a break here, folks, from the show. Don't touch that down. We're just getting you started upon our return. We go to the phone lines. We grab your calls, your thoughts, your conversations. Definitely want to hear from you, the Alabama fans, right after this. Touchdown Alabama is a fully independent outlet that covers all things Alabama football. Founded in 2007 when Nick Saban arrived, we have been here through the entire Nick Saban era. In this new era, now is the perfect time to stay up to date on everything Alabama football and know what's going on, including everything that's going on with recruiting. Our website at touchdownalabama.com will always keep you in the know on everything that's going on with the Crimson Tide. You can also get breaking news notifications with our app. We have over 100,000 followers on Facebook, over 60,000 on Twitter, nearly 30,000 on Instagram, over 30,000 on TikTok, and we're constantly growing. Also, be sure to become a part of this rapidly growing venture and subscribe to TouchdownAlabama.com to get inside and premium information on the team as well as recruiting inside the state of Alabama. We are constantly adding to our premium subscription package, so be sure to lock in now. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. How we feeling, everybody? We're back in here rocking and rolling to the action from the break. Number one ticket for your Crimson Tide football news right here on YouTube. In my own words, George truly, Stephen Smith of TDA, my man Eli Walker in the production studio. Continue tapping the like button. Hit that thumbs up right there. Smash the like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. Make this your place here. For all things Crimson Tide football, daily Super Chat go $100 daily. Super Chat go $100 right there. And appreciate all of you. But and as you guys are getting your thoughts to call in, 205 448 1358. I'm going to call in to let your voice be made known on the show, 205 
248-1358. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang. And pretty much that first topic, I mean, right now it just looks like nobody in the quarterback room <clears throat> is going anywhere. But love being around each other, love being with each other, love playing with each other in the competition of it all. So it's awesome to see that. And then just the camaraderie being built up by other uh, coaching staff where these quarterbacks are concerned. Guys, show some love to my man, Bill! Bill from New York, that 10 dollar donation, helping us out there. Appreciate Bill from New York giving us that love here on the show. Dropping that in the bucket there. Cool call topic here, folks. Well, Nate Oaks, I'm gonna my men's basketball. Magical run. Got all the way to the final four this year for the first time in program history. Came up short against UConn. But here's a team that if Oates is able to get everybody else back, he won't be able to get Estrada back. Estrada's gone. But if you can get Grant Nelson, Mark Sears, Rylan Griffin, Tyrell Wrightsale, Sam Walters, if you can get the majority of those guys back or all of those guys back, along with the recruits that you're bringing in, this is still a championship team moving forward. So hopefully Coach Oates is able to get those guys back with the exception of Estrada that he's that he's out of eligibility at this point. I know Kentucky ran off John Calipari, who's now at Arkansas. It's been news of Kentucky targeting Nate Oates. But Greg Byrne doing everything he can to keep Nate Oates in Tuscaloosa. I think Nate Oates wants to remain here. He sees, hey, I got so close to winning, to winning it all in my fifth year. I got real close in my fifth year to winning the NCAA tournament. So, all of Alabama basketball is missing Elias a big man. That's it. Like, Nate Oates gets him a seven foot, Seven one, seven two, just just, just a seven footer, seven foot, two hundred thirty plus pounds or so. Get you somebody in the paint that can control the paint, command the paint, clog the middle, block shots, protect the rim, get rebounds, get points. That's it. All you're missing is a seven footer in the paint. If Nate Oates can get that, then this is a men's basketball team that can win the NCAA tournament. Because without that, got pretty close to it. So all it's missing here, seven footer, big legit center, big post presence right there in the middle. But Greg Byrne, Nate Oates looking to remain here at the University of Alabama men's basketball program. But take another break right here, folks. We'll touch that down upon our return. We get back into the other notable news from Alabama's second scrimmage. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back after the break to in my own words. We're out here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa. Oh, yeah, this. <laughs> Gotta get this. Gotta get one of these right here. Can't rock that band without this shirt right here, fresh polo. You gotta also rock the all paint. Like Kanye West right there. Keychains, gotta get you some keychains. University of Alabama keychains. I'm telling you, if you are a diehard Alabama fan and you're looking for some big time apparel, this place has got everything. We're talking shirts. Shoes, sweatshirts, uh, hoodies, cups, mugs, keychains. If you're just a Todd fan that has an itch to get more apparel, get more swag in your game, you come right here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa, right here in Midtown Village. And also you can shop online. The link is in the description to get your gear right here at Alumni Hall.
Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, people, here we go. We're back in, rocking and rolling to the action from the break. Number one ticket for your Crimson Tide football news. In my own words, George Truly, Stephen Smith, touchdown, Alabama Magazine right here. Also, I remind everybody, you got to get that subscription to touchdownalabama.com, TDA Plus, new podcast, the way it is, with yours truly. First two episodes dropped on last weekend. We're getting more in the works here, so get that subscription to touchdownalabama.com, TDA Plus, where you can get the way it is. I go into never before told stories. My 15 year career covering Alabama football. Gotta enjoy that right there. Our guys, uh, Eli Walker and John Ivory, did a great job on that commercial. That commercial, Eli, was real. <laughs> that, 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 that just felt real just seeing that uh, being played there. But definitely check it out. TouchdownAlabama.com, TDA Plus to get the, the way it is podcast. But topic two here at the conversation, folks. Other notable news that happened in the second scrimmage over the weekend at Bryant-Denny Stadium prior to this week's A-Day game. First and foremost, on the offensive line, Jaden Roberts and Wilkin Formby. Jaden Roberts, the uh, the right guard, had a slight injury that happened in the second scrimmage, uh, according to his mom uh, that posted the update on social media. It was a twisted ankle. He's okay. Uh, he's fine. He's all right. MRI, twisted ankle. He's good. Uh, of course, Kang and DeBoer mentioned it after the second scrimmage that Jaden is okay. Uh, young man of whom uh, will he go? In the A-Day game, that remains to be seen, but he is okay. It's nothing serious. Twisted ankle, he's fine. Really good news there in terms of Jaden Roberts. When you look at Will Conformby, here is a young man that is emerging at that right tackle position. Formby, who came as a four-star in the 2023 class, Northridge High School in Tuscaloosa, he came in the same class with Caden Proctor, with Miles McVay, with uh, Rock Montgomery, uh, with Caden Proctor. You know, all those guys came in the same class. And uh, Formby, to me, was the most technically sound offensive tackle in the class. And uh, I was told, credible sources there that were at the scrimmage, that Formby took all of the first team reps at right tackle. Really looks good. Looks really strong in pass protection. Now, Formby at 6'7", 320 pounds, he's not as big as McVay. Miles McVay is 350. But what Miles McVay gives you in power, Wilkin Formby gives you more so of pass pro technique. So with, with Formby, you sacrifice a little bit more power, but you gain more in pass pro. And in this offense where Kangan DeBoer and Nick Sheridan – they're going to want to throw the football. They're going to want, they want to get short passes, big bomb plays, screen stuff. They're going to do quite a bit of passing. They're going to mix it in, have the balance with the run game as well, but they're going to do quite a bit of passing. So with that being said, you're willing to sacrifice power if it means I get better pass pro production. So that's what Wilkin Formby gives you. Had a very strong had a very strong second scrimmage there at that right tackle position. But that's Formby and Jayden, and uh, Jay, not Jayden, uh, Jayden Roberts there. But we move on here to other notable news offensively. Uh, Jeremy Bernard. Jeremy Bernard looking like he is the next transfer wide receiver for Alabama to make waves in this offense. We've seen guys come in from other programs to the Crimson Tide and have success. 2015. We all remember Richard Slotty Pippen Mullaney comes over from Oregon State in 2015 and had a good year. 38 catches, what, 390 receiving yards, five touchdowns. We all remember he caught the dart from Jake Coker, 2015 uh, SEC championship game against Florida to help you win that game. 
So Mullaney was impactful. Helped Alabama get to and win a college football playoff national championship. 2016, Garrick Dieter came over from Bowling Green. Had success. Had four touchdown catches. Helped Alabama to an SEC championship that year. Got Alabama to the college football playoff national championship game. If you go and you look at uh, Jamison Williams, uh, uh, 2021, uh, had one year coming over from Ohio State, had a single-season school big performance for Alabama. In one year, Jamo, 79 catches, 1,572 yards receiving, 15 touchdowns, helped Alabama to an SEC title, big year for, for, for Jamo. And then last year, uh, Jermaine Burton, had a very productive season for the Crimson Tides. We've seen transfer guys come in and make waves, and Jeremy Bernard continues to just be consistent. First scrimmage, did a lot of good things. Second scrimmage, did a lot of good things. All throughout the practice, spring ball has done a lot of good things, so looking forward to seeing what Bernard does in the A-Day game coming up here this weekend. But that's Jeremy Bernard. As we now flip this over to... Defense, you look at the two you look at two defensive backs, Keon Saab and Red Morgan. Keon Saab has had an outstanding spring, two strong scrimmages. Uh, he continues to make plays there at that free safety spot across from Malachi Moore. Red Morgan, the freshman from Central Phoenix City High School. Every single day in spring ball, Eli, somebody's talking about Red Morgan. From the very first day of practice to where we stand right now, and tomorrow is the final media viewing practice prior to the A-Day game, but from the first spring practice to right now, people cannot stop talking about Red. He's been everywhere all spring whether he's been making a big tackle and run support, whether he's breaking up on the football, whether he's creating an interception, whatever play that's being made out there, Red Morgan is making that play. He's hyper-athletic. He can jump out the gym, highly smart, highly instinctive, making plays. And right now, he's looking more and more like the guy at the Husky position for Alabama. He can play Husky. He can play free safety. I know Devontae Smith is in that situation at Husky as well, but th th this secondary, Eli, is going to be really intriguing. Like the best five to six guys to get out there, it's going to be really intriguing because uh, you can't sit Red Morgan down. Malachi is good. Devontae Smith's good. Keon Saab's got experience. Devontae Jackson's good. Jaleel Hurley can play. You got Zabian Brown pushing Jaleel Hurley for a corner spot. I mean, uh, who, who are you going to sit? Like, who's going to be, who's going to have the responsibility to come off the bench in, in the secondary? Like, who's going to have the responsibility to come off the bench? And I have yet to mention Tony Mitchell. So, who in the secondary is going to have to have the responsibility of coming off the bench? That's going to be a big question right there. You got a lot of real talented dudes in the back end. And Red Morgan's coming in here as a freshman, just pushing everybody. So, very, this secondary is going to be really interesting. It's going to be really intriguing. So, that's another position group that in the A-Day game we're going to have to watch. But Morgan, Keon Saab, both strong scrimmages here over the weekend. So, last but not least, defensively, Quay Russo. One of the two bullies from Carver High School in Montgomery, Quay Russo is that dude on defense. James Smith, as on the defensive line, did did well also, but Russo played quite a bit with the first string, and uh, his quickness, his initial step to make plays. Uh, Dude comes with bad intentions. Uh, Quay Russo can ball, y'all. Prior to the second scrimmage, Kane Womack spoke to reporters and said, and, and he highlighted Quandarius Robinson in that outside linebacker room. He highlighted Keanu Colt. 
In that outside linebacker room, he highlighted Yancey Pierre. In the outside linebacker room, and he highlighted Quay Russo and saying, this dude has a special skill set. I've been very impressed with Russo. Russo in the second scrimmage got his shot with that first team. He, he, he's a dude. <laughs> he's a dude out there. Just like Kang and DeBoer answered my question in the first scrimmage about Jeremiah Alexander. And he said, when that guy's on the field, stuff happens. Here's Quay Russo, him on the field with that first team unit. Some stuff happening. So this is an Alabama defense. Got some ballers starting to emerge. And now you got the Alabama offense with some guys starting to emerge here. Two really good scrimmages that will culminate in what do we see the A-Day game. This will be what all of our eyes will be focused on this upcoming Saturday. We take another break right here, folks. We'll touch that dial. When we get back, we return to the phone lines. We grab your calls, your thoughts, your conversations. We want to hear from you, and we get to you right after this. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Whitwill Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care in support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WhitwillSports.com and get your title towel today. This is Chris Rogers, 2009 National Champion. You are listening to the baddest, when I say the baddest, sports show in the state of Alabama. In my own words, you know, yours truly, Touchdown Alabama Magazine, don't touch that dial. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, all right, here we go, people. We're back locked in to the action from the break. Number one ticket for Bama. Football news in my own words. George Truly, Stephen Smith here, TDA. I'm Eddie uh, Walker in the production studio, handling things from behind the scenes here. Phone lines open right now. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205 448 1358. And I'm going to call in. Let your voice be made known, 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you. We grab this call right here. You're live on the show. What's happening, how we feel, and state your name, and where you calling from. Stephen, how you doing? Bill from New York. How, what's up? Doing good, Bill. You're doing good. We would have liked to have seen – you know, men's basketball, take down UConn and get into that championship game. But great season for Nate Oates. Uh, hopefully he can get a lot of his talent to stick around for another year. And, uh, you know, Greg Bird and him, Coach Oates, can make this thing remain in Alabama. Yeah, I don't follow too basketball too much. But I got to tell you, that was impressive. Steven, got a, couple, got a couple of questions for you. I'm not hearing anything about Proctor. What's up with him? with his comeback right, right right now bill it comes down to with the portal opens up on the 15th of this month that's two days after the a day game will he put his name in there concretely because the special the speculation is he's going to put his name in uh, he's going to come back to alabama but he has not entered the portal yet so does he really choose to do that and we and all eyes will be on the portal next Monday to see what Proctor's name end up in there. Right now, it's just been pure speculation to this point, but we will see on Monday, next Monday, will his name really be in there. But at this point, is he even working out? Like, you know, with, he, he, I guess he's not with Iowa. Is he working out with anybody? Well right, well, right, well, right now, I haven't seen anything about him working out. He could be with a personal trainer, with, with, with some people that he knows. But right now, I haven't seen any type of footage or any type of detail on Proctor out there working out. Mm. Okay. The other thing I wanted to ask you, 
is what's up with Keon Kiley? I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing his name mentioned a lot. And I, tell you, I, I said from day one, when I saw like a uh, YouTube video on him, the guy reminds me uh, of like DeMarcus Ware. That guy looks great, but I, I'm not hearing his name. What's going on? Keon Keenly, he's going to be used a lot on the defensive line this year versus being an outside linebacker. They're going to have him play kind of an edge-rushing defensive end. Kane Womack, the defensive coordinator, really likes Keeley. He's been getting a lot of that personal coaching from Freddie Roach and Jamie Mosley because Alabama wants to turn Keeley loose on quarterbacks. He's had, a, he's had a great spring throughout the spring thus far. So, Keon Keeley, everybody on the defensive coaching staff wants to turn him loose because they see something very special in that young man. Oh, that's good to hear. That really is. And the last thing I want to say, I, you know, I, I, I pick things up once in a while on the, the Internet, and I hear the quarterback rooms exploding. <laughs> you know, first of all, they say Milrow is the first guy to get to work every day. Every day, you know, and, and I love hearing that because, you know, I, I, let's say he needs some work. Everybody does. And Simpson sounds like he's really coming around. The kid from Washington looks like uh, he's going to be great. And, you know, I, I, I don't know if we've ever been this stacked at quarterback, and I love it. And I'm going to let you go. You know what I mean? It, it, Steven, it's, it's, it's funny. The two best shows on the air, both guys are named Stephen Smith. All right, so you, you take care, brother. Appreciate my man Bill from New York calling in here on a Monday. And it's just the, the last time Bama's quarterback room was this stat, people. You got to go back to, what, 2017 when you had Jalen Hurts, you had you had Tua Tagovailoa, and you had Mac Jones all in one room. And they all pushed each other. They all uh, appreciated each other. They all pulled for each other, even in the face of competition, right? And that quarterback room, uh, it allowed you to get, what, two national championships, 2017, where Jalen got you to the college football playoff, and then Tua comes off the bench in the second half of the national championship game against Georgia and wins you the title. And then 2020, you know, Mac Jones, the remnant from that quarterback room, 2020, you know, Mac goes uh, start to finish as the starting quarterback and wins you a national championship even in the COVID shortened season there. So the last time you had a quarterback room that stat was 2017. But this quarterback room with Milrow, Simpson, Lonergan, Austin Mack, really gonna enjoy seeing how this group materializes on the field. But as you guys are getting your more of your thoughts to call into the show, 205-448-1358. Got to go on this call topic here, Eli. Dallas Turner, who arguably may be the first defensive player to hear his name called in this upcoming draft later on this month. Former Alabama outside linebacker, consensus All-American, a guy that led the Crimson Tide in sacks last year of 10, tackles for loss 14 and a half, quarterback hurries with 13 SEC champion this past year permanent team captain Dallas Turner had a visit today with the Minnesota Vikings in his pre-draft process the Vikings have two first round picks they got the 11th overall pick Eli and I think they got the number 23 overall pick Minnesota Vikings so uh Dallas Turner had a meeting with the Bears first. Now he's got the Vikings. He's also got visits lined up with the Chargers, the Cardinals, and your Falcons, Eli. Dallas Turner has a, has a visit with the Falcons coming up soon. So he's getting his pre-draft process together. We'll see who calls Dallas Turner's his name. Not a part of this month. First round where the NFL draft is concerned. Take our final break here, folks, from the show. When we get back, we wrap things up with which position group will have your attention the most in the A-Day game? We wrap things up with that discussion after this.
I'm Malachi Moore, and you're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith on Touchdown Alabama YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. What's going on? This is Benny Bites. I'm the founder and owner of Touchdown Alabama. And you guys are supporting one of the only independent outlets covering Alabama football today. No other sports, no networks, just Alabama football. Roll, tie, roll. And we're back into the action here, folks, from the break. Number one ticket for Bama. Football news in my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of TDA. Happy to have you all checking us out here this evening. Uh, Eli, did you enjoy the uh, solar eclipse today? I mean, was that was that pretty cool? I mean, it, it didn't really happen for you. I mean, it didn't really happen for, for me either. I mean, we, we, we got some clouds that, that came through, but not much of a solar eclipse happened. I think we were out of the reach of totality. I ain't gonna be we didn't, we didn't get to, to the totality at all. But, so clouds covered it where you are, where you were, Eli. Same for me. Now I have an aunt who lives in Cleveland, Ohio. Shouts out to my aunt Dean. Uh, my aunt mentioned that at 9 a.m. in Cleveland, Ohio, it got pitch black for about four minutes, and uh, you, they they saw shades of dark purple, light purple. They saw the solar eclipse for about four minutes. And then it went back to regular daylight. So I guess Ohio, particularly Cleveland, was in the realm of totality. So they got it. They saw it, but didn't um, didn't see it much on this end. But that's okay. That's okay. For everybody that did get a chance to see that solar eclipse, hopefully uh, you had your protective glasses on, being able to, to see that. Uh, so that's that was the big thing that happened on today. But final discussion of conversation here folks on the show the positional group or what will have your attention the most here in Alabama spring game like what positional group will have your attention the most here when you as a fan you take to Bryant Denny Stadium to watch the spring game watch the 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 atmosphere you watch the competition unfold on the field in the final practice of spring ball what will have your attention the most for me i can name several positions that will have my attention the most but i think the biggest one will be on the offensive line primarily both offensive tackle positions i will be looking at elijah pritchett and will conform be a lot how they establish their anchor, how they reestablish, how they're able to kick, kick, kick out, uh, not allow defensive players to touch the quarterback. That's what my eyeballs will be on. Elijah Pritchett and Will Conformby. How do they handle the outside edge rush? How do they handle the blitzing defensive linemen? How will they be able to you know, neutralize guys and keep guys away from getting to the uh, the quarterback in the passing game. I mean, I could name uh, a lot of other positions, but I think the offensive line, primarily the offensive tackle spots, is my big thing there. So for you, as an Alabama fan, put that in the chat line right now. The positional group that your attention will be the most on in the A Day game, and as you're putting those in the, the chat in the uh, in the comment section right there, I think uh, Eli will take the majority of those and put those up on the screen there. So the positional group domination that you will have your most attention on, your most focus on in the spring game. For me, offensive line with the emphasis on the offensive tackle position, left tackle, right tackle, Elijah Pritchard and Will Conform. If that's just me. That's just what my folks will be on, especially after, you know, the, the Crimson Tides offensive line gave up 44 sacks a season ago. Now, many of those was Jalen Milrow at times holding the ball too long, but 
you know, that'll be my focus right there on the offensive line. We got GT18. He's got his focus on the defensive backs, the defensive secondary. That's a good one. That's a real good one. Appreciate GT18 writing that in on his part. Uh, everybody else, definitely, we want your thoughts in the comment section. Which positional group will have your attention the most here in this spring game? Don Park is writing in. Okay. Oh, DP. He's got his eyes on the O-line slash D-line. He wants to see the offensive line protecting, but the defensive line getting after the quarterback and stuffing the run. And also in the defensive line rotation. Can you keep a fresh rotation out there, getting different guys in, seeing what they can do out there on the field? So we got defensive backs. Uh, we got O-line slash D-line. Some good stuff so far coming from GT18 and Don Parker. Once again, people, continue to get your thoughts into the comment section here on the show. The position group, the position unit that will have your attention here in the A-Day game. I see here my man Dale B dropping in that $10 donation in the Super Chats. Appreciate Dale B. Throwing the love our way. Thanks to him. Absolutely. Dale B also writes in, he will have his eyes on the offensive line. I'm on line love right now. I'm saying offensive line. Dumb Parker saying offensive line. Dale B is saying offensive. Okay, O line. Pressure on y'all now. Step on up, do y'all thing in the spring game. Especially the offensive tackles. Will conform B, Elijah Pritchard. We're pulling for y'all too. Go out there and make sure that you got that pass pro set. Have that pass pro in line there. I want to see Eli. Will somebody in the chat line throw kicker in there? I want to see the kickers because, uh, you know, Will Reichert in the National Football League heading to the draft, in the draft thing now. And you got Connor Talty and Upton Belafont competing there for that kicker spot. So, kicker should be, uh, should be something thrown in there. Definitely. But I would throw kicker in there, absolutely. So, but get, get your thoughts into the, into the uh, comment section. Definitely want to hear that from you. Eli, what, what's your attention going to be on? I didn't gave mine on the offensive line, but uh, on, your Eli, on your end, Eli, what, what's your attention going to be on? Let, let, let's see let's see what you're going to put down there in terms of your attention here for this spring game. Let's see what my man Eli is going to say. The production. Oh, okay. He got secondary and D-line. Okay. So Eli's got secondary, those DBs. He's also got the defensive line. So he, he he's sharing GT 18's thought on the DBs, and he's also sharing half of Don Parker's thought with the defensive line. So there you go. There you go. Eli's got his thoughts right there. There are uh, there, there, there's somebody else now about to pull in. I thought there. Kevin C right seeing the snaps. He is looking forward to seeing the snaps from the center position be sound. And that's uh, James Brockermeyer. And that's also, you know, Parker Browsford, of whom Parker, according to Kang and DeBoer, he's just going through some non-football things right now, but he's okay. He's still going to stick around in Alabama. Uh, he's not leaving the program, according to uh, uh, Kang and DeBoer. Uh, not any type of trouble there. So that'll be James Brockermeyer and Parker Browse for in terms of the snaps. Roll Tide and Rise Up says the kicking. There we go. So Roll Tide and Rise Up gives the kicking position. Will Riker gone. You have uh, Upton Belafonte, Connor Talty battling for that starting kicking job right there. So there you go. A lot of things to have your attention on here. When you talk about the A-Day game, you guys continue to get your thoughts here, your 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 comments in the, into the chat line, the position group that you're going to have your eye on the most, the position group that will command, require your attention here when you look at the upcoming spring game. But as always, Bama Nation, you want the best in news, notes, information, 
coverage on your favorite program, that being the Crimson Tide. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama magazine app. You download the app from the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store if you have the Android phone for your audio needs. Check us out, iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm, iHeartRadio. We got you covered right there. The good and gracious Lord sees fit. I'm trying to be back on Wednesday. Continuing the conversation that is tied football. Remember Bama fans. Uh, well, not remember Bama fans. I want to shout all of you out, uh, the Bama fans, for all the love on the show today. For the phone calls, for the YouTube chatting, for the donations, for you making this your show, your spot, your place to talk all things of Alabama football. Appreciate you guys. Guys, show some love to my man, Eli Walker, in the production studio. Holding things down from behind the scenes there. Till next time, folks, husbands, love your wives. Wives, appreciate, value those husbands. Children, continue doing the right thing, fine thing, smart thing, good thing, legitimate thing to not be bored there. You get you those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. You protect yourself. You protect the loved ones around you. Till next time, folks, I'm your man Stephen Smith, and you've been listening to In My Own Words.